going on my friends? I hope you're very well. Uh, we have a, a bit of an update here. You can see this is my Montezuma Cypress after I removed the, the apex so we could get more foliage on the bottom. And you can see that it's doing very, very well. This is a project that um, I just started. Well, not, not, not this one in particular, but a cutting that I rooted from a Montezuma Cypress. I started using it as a little pond. You can see that this little guy is completely submerged in water. Yeah. At all times, this is kept on the water. So this is what this species likes, and this is where it thrives. And I'm telling you this because uh, if you haven't subscribed to my other channel, uh, you will be really helping me out if you did. Thank you so much if you have already. And uh, yeah, this is the first update. And over here we have our Japanese black pines. We can see that the, the foliage is nice and healthy. More little candles coming up. Yeah. So yeah, uh, a bit of an introduction. And now let's continue with the, you know, the main part of the video. So here we are. Um, as you can see, have we got a couple of uh, trees that we've seen before. Uh, this one in particular and this one over here. Yeah, we're gonna talk about it in a couple of minutes. And I also wanted to show you, <laughs> this is gonna be a super short video, but I also wanted to show, show you uh, the war criminal that we had in our previous video. It's exhausting being back. So yeah, there she is. Um, so, uh, this video, like I said, it's gonna be super short. I just wanted to show you an update on this little Diodar Cedar that we've seen before. You can see that it's uh, thriving. Uh, it's really grown in nicely. You can see the trunk there and the base. And uh, this is not the planting angle that I'm going for. In fact, if we tilt it to the side a little bit, this is uh, what we're going to be getting, yeah? This is what we're going to be doing. So uh, you can see that we got the main body, the main branches already nice and settled. Yeah, it's all a matter of uh, coming in and pruning to develop back budding after the main foliage has hardened. And over here we got the sacrifice branch. So this can continue to grow and grow, elongate, and that would bring you know thickness to the base you know uh, and uh, you can see that it's growing in a colander yeah so depending on what I see this season this autumn I might change this to well I've got two options maybe change it to a larger container so this can even grow can grow even more you know more vigorously for the next season or I might leave it as is and maybe start thinking about a training pot. So uh, either way, uh, I really like this little tree and uh, you can see the process, the evolution of this little guy. It's one of the first trees that I've worked with in my channel. So you can see the, the evolution of it. So over here we have the other little tree that we worked with before is this little pine. We can see that this is, would be the front of the tree and you can see that it ha has been wired quite dramatically. Uh, you can see this loop because this was a huge, well, not huge, but super long sapling uh, and we just needed to bring the, the green back to the base of the trunk, right? So this is something that maybe as bonsai would not have that much value for uh, design purposes, but I really like it. You know, and uh, you can see how it's growing nicely. The wire is uh, still a bit loose. I mean, it's doing its job of uh, modeling it, but no, it's not biting into the little trunk. So uh, I quite like it. And we can see here that we got, you know, growth from this season. There's little bluish tips. Um, so this is doing very, very well. So. A couple of updates and here we got the main you know the main operation for today's video so let me just uh, place it 
over here and uh, I'll see you in a bit. I think we can see better now, but still. Um, we can't see the whole thing. Anyway, we can see that this is another Diodar cedar that is not growing in a colander but growing one of these little pots, you know, training plastic pots. This would be the front of the tree, I guess. This one over here, or this one over here, yeah. So you can see that we got tons of new foliage and the sacrifice branch on top so that it continue to, you know, get thicker and thicker at the base. So why am I showing you this? Well, we can see that it's uh, growing nicely and because of that, some some parts of the little trunk have been starting to get so big that the little wire has started to bite into it. So we don't want any big scars in this little guy, even though it's super young. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, just remove it so it can continue to grow vigorously. You know, what happens is that when, when you have a tree that's actively growing and it gets constrained by the wire, sometimes that, that growth can be impeded uh, or impeded. Yeah, so, uh, or stunted, if you will. I was originally going to cut this, but I decided I was carefully going to remove it. If you try to do this on your own, you know, if you have trees and you want to dewire them, maybe it's just the first sapling that you work with, um, I would suggest using a wire cutter, but if you, if you can, you know, if you don't have enough, or I mean, you don't have a lot of foliage around that maybe you can damage while doing the... Um, untangling of it, um, I would suggest using a wire cutter. If not, if you don't have a lot of foliage and you can do it carefully with your hands, you know, go ahead, you can do that. I'm gonna do that because I want to recycle this piece of wire and I'm, you know, slowly but surely gonna do that with my hands. So we can see that the marks are already there, but you know, this is something that's also happening with uh, a juniper. I'm going to have to remove the wire very, very soon because it's already biting into. Now on the opposite side of something like this happening, I also have a little juniper that's now growing like crazy in this uh, growing season. And because of that, all of those markings that we can see there uh, are just vanishing, you know, <laughs> are just being filled up by the tree. Uh, and that's really cool. Uh, so I'm also going to do the top here. And I'm going to pause the video because there's a car coming in. It's got a sound system because it's selling something. One moment. Okay, so I think it won't affect the audio anymore. Uh, and I was saying that, yeah. With time, and if your tree is uh, fairly young, those markings can be erased, you know, by the tree's growth. And uh, since I used uh, aluminum wire, this is very, very easy to remove. So, look, now it's loose enough for me to do this. And there we go. Now this little piece right here, I could use it in uh, another project. It's so malleable that I can do this with my hands, no problem. That would be completely, completely impossible if I were to use copper, I, uh, you know, I would need tools, or if I use steel. So uh, yeah, here we can see that it holds its shape very well. And now in the future, it's just a matter of coming in and pruning. Uh, I want I want more foliage in this little branch over here. I had it, but for some reason, um, I think, you know, it was one of those times where you walk by and you brush the plant with your your legs or something, and it, it lost a lot of foliage there, but it's still alive, and there are a couple of little needles that can uh, keep it alive, this little branch. So maybe in the future we will have more, more foliage there. Uh, if we... 
take a closer look here, we can see the markings there, but they're not severe. This would be completely removed over time, so I'm not too worried about that. So, nice. So about pruning, uh, maybe you've seen other videos with these little guys. Some of my videos uh, where I prune to get back budding. So for example, what I would do is come in, snip it here, and then get these two little branches to, well, this one in, in particular. So I would nip it here and get these two little branches to ramify and continue ramifying that branch. Same thing over here, I would clip the tips and just leave this growing and growing. But I have to do this when the foliage is mature, you know. If it's very, very tender, uh, you try to pull it and immediately comes out, maybe you shouldn't do that because uh, the plant is uh, spending energy trying to get that foliage to mature. And also that new foliage is very, very good at getting energy from the sunlight, right? It's like a new uh, power cell or a new one of these uh, solar panels, right? So uh, uh, new foliage, it's, it's very, very good for the tree. Anyway, so uh, I wanted to show you this little update uh, on this little guy. In the future, when I prune this properly and when I transplant this to a larger pot or a training pot or the definite bonsai pot, uh, I'm also going to show you the process. It's going to be quite cool. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, so I hope you really liked this video. If you have any comments, doubts, questions, anything, drop them down below and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.